In this video, I'll be going over how to go from a floor plan to a 3D model that has foundation, walls, openings, fixtures, and a roof. Now, I'm not going over how to detail it completely, but I am going over how to take a floor plan and changing it from a two dimensions into something that is workable, usable, and that you can further develop into having all of the details that you want. So thank you very much for being here and let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing we'll do is take this plan and we're going to organize it because technically this is only two dimensional. So this is the drafting portion. Now we're going to go into the modeling portion. So what I'll do is I'll click here on new layer and I'll type in drafting where you can call it 2D or drawing. And what I'll do is I'll select from the hatch all the way up to the default. And I'll take all of these and I'll click and drag to the drafting layer. This way it creates a sub organization of the layers. And now we can hide it by using kind of this toggle. And now everything that is drawn or drafted is going to be under this drafting layer. And now we're going to create a new layer called model. And now I can make this my current layer and we can hide the entire drawing. And this will make it uh, a lot easier for us to draw and create the 3D model without having the issue of selecting some of the things that we have here drafting. So I'll go here to lock or hide. And this way we can now work with this as a reference and we can now Start with the model. I'll click here on new sub layer and call this wall. The cool thing is that we can have two wall layers that have the same name, but as long as they're under a different layer um, header, then we'll be able to organize it this way. And so this is going to be model dash wall, and this is going to be drafting dash wall. Now what we'll do is we'll make our wall layer, our current layer, and this is where we can now go from top. So we'll go double click and we'll go here into perspective view and we'll rotate around to see our drawing. Now, typically you might have that here inside of your viewport, but I sometimes keep it out here because I don't want the grid to get in the way. Uh, that's just something more of a personal preference. So now let's move into creating the walls and I'll show you two different techniques. One that will work really well if you are very careful and have your walls really clean. And the other method that you can take if, let's say, your walls are not perfectly organized and they're not closed, we can take the other step. So let's jump into that. So first thing we'll do is now with our wall layer, what we'll do is we'll go here to our drafting and we'll hide everything except for the walls. And this is what I meant by if you have things clean and organized, you will be able to select the walls. So I'll go here to unlock everything and I'll select the walls. Sometimes, oh, let's see here. I think we have two, one on top of the other. So now this should be good. Now with one, with this, sometimes you won't have it joined like I have it here. So I will type in explode. So you can see that sometimes you have them as individual lines, which is totally fine. What you want to do is select everything. Now I don't want to select this one because that this is going to actually cause an issue when I join it. So I'll actually select everything and hold down control to deselect this line. Now I'll type in join. So I'll now that those are selected, I'll type in join. And here at the top left, it has to say one closed curve or a closed curve or multiple closed curves because if they're not closed, then you won't be able to extrude them as a solid and that will cause issues down the road. So what I would say is if they do say one closed curve, which will be the case if you're careful and make sure that there's only one set of lines for all of them and that they're all touching from start to end. Now I can type in, like I said, join, and it says it's going to join it into one. 
Now we can take this. Here's the thing. This is still under our wall layer here. What happens is we want to make our model wall layer current and we'll type in extrude curve because that's a line. Now make sure here at the top that it says solid. Yes. Delete input. No, because we want to keep that line and that should be good. Now I'll take this and I'll extrude this up, this up by nine feet. I'll type in nine feet. And by default, you will have this under wireframe. So when you right click on perspective, it'll say wireframe. If we go here to shaded, now we see the solid planes of that 3D model. And this already gets us a long way uh, for creating our elevations because it's creating all of them at the same time. And later on, we'll be able to extract those lines to be able to create our construction documents. For now, we'll take this and we'll start creating the openings or the headers for the doors. Because as you can see, we have a gap here. And that would also be the case when you're building it is sometimes you build up these walls and then you put the headers across. So let's do that. First, we'll go here to a new layer. I'll call this door. Win door or mm, trying to think if it's going to be window door. We'll keep it here under window door. I'll make that my current layer and I will create a box starting from this corner to this corner up by eight feet. So this is an eight foot door. Now we want to create another box from this corner to this corner, which technically you can go up to this corner because since we started at this corner, it keeps it on that same plane and then up to this height. Now we can take this right click on wall and go to change object layer. And now when we make our wall layer, the current layer and we hide the door, we basically created this header. Now we want to do the exact same thing to this door. So what I'll do is this door is going to be a shorter door. So I'll turn on my door layer and I can even change the color. So let's go here and change it to brown. And that also helps visually so we can see the different elements that we create inside of the 3D model. And I will go here to door. We'll create a box starting at this corner, ending at this corner and up by six feet, eight inches, which is the typical, the smallest door size that you can find. Um, and so now that we've created the door, now we can go to do a wall layer rather than changing it later and creating another box from here to here and up to the top. What I want to do is create a header that matches this one. So eight feet tall. So rather than creating a door, what I'll do is I'll create the header by starting, creating a box, starting here at this corner, ending at this corner. And since I don't have a reference of, the, of a door, I can actually go here to this one or go down by one foot. But this way you can see that it'll match to that height. And so we basically created the overall form of this building and we can move on to kind of creating the rest of the details. But before that we'll do, what we'll do is we'll hide the door and window and select everything. Be selecting this line. Now I'll go to BU for Boolean union, which will take all of these solids and put them all together. And now I can do merge all coplanar faces, which will get rid of the creases or the lines that were here when we joined it together. So that's one way to get your model really clean and ready for our next steps. Now let's move on to creating the foundation. 
Typically, the foundation will be detailed by an engineer, but if it's going to be a small standalone structure, there are certain minimums that you want to stay within. Uh, and like I said, of course, if it's something that's not typical, you do want to com um, confirm with an engineer. So what we'll do here is go to a new layer, create a new layer, and we'll call this foundation. So I call this FDN make that my current layer and do a dark gray color. What I'll do is I'll take a box and I'll go from this corner to this corner and we'll go down the depth of the foundation. So we'll just say two feet and I'm doing two feet and it's doing it up. So I actually want to do minus two feet. So we want it to go down by two feet. Now I'll type in, what we want to do is know how wide our footings are going to be and how deep our um, slab is going to be. So what we'll do is we'll duplicate face border, which will give us the edge of the foundation. So dupe F for face border, and I'll select the bottom one and I'll hit enter. Then I'll do offset and do to the inside so it's over offsetting so I'll do two feet so I'll do 12 inches this then I move up so move vertical from here to here and then move this down minus five feet or minus five inches if that's how thick the slab is going to be, so five inches. Now we can take this and do extrude curve, making sure that it says solid yes, delete input, no is fine. Now I can extrude further. Then the foundation, and I'll select this to BD for Boolean difference, and then this one. Then I can select this one and delete it. And now the last detail is chamfer edge, which will use the chamfer of four and do a chamfer of the inside edges here, which is typically you wouldn't see that in reality. You, what you would see is that the foundation, sometimes the edge is not perfect. Um, so that's kind of what that shows. And so that takes care of the foundation. Um, now let's move on to the next steps to further kind of complete this model. Now in this part, we'll be creating the roof. And there's a few steps that I'd like to take to make sure that everything is accurate and that, yeah, that everything is accurate for the most part. So what we'll do is we'll go here to model, create a new layer, and call this roof. I'll make that my current layer and change the color, something maybe like brown, something different than black or the brown here. So what we'll do is we'll go to a clipping plane because we first want to visualize a section of it because that's going to be the best way of creating that roof. So we'll go here to clipping plane. When you type in clipping plane, then you're going to go to vertical. And now we can create a section across As you can see, this will help us get an idea of what the back side, the front side, and which way we want to slope the roof. For this exercise, I'll be sloping it from the front to the back, and we need to pick a specific pitch, so I'll be showing you those steps. What we want to do now is go to this clipping plane, and we'll go here to disable Clipping plane. Now we'll type in or go to a polyline and create a line segment on the ground where you want the section taken. If you want it taken at the same place, uh, that's fine. I'll create one right next to that clipping plane. And I'll do that using the top viewport. So I will go to top viewport, create a line here. And now I'll go here to perspective and see that it's basically been created 
here on the ground. What I like to do is actually move this down, making sure that it's kind of past the model. And I'll go here to extrude curve up. The reason why I'm doing this is basically I'm going to get the intersection between the plane and the model. And this way I can model the roof right here. So what I'll do is go to a command called intersect two sets. The first set is going to be this plane and the second set is going to be the model. Go ahead enter. Now we basically created a section that we can now work on. So what I'll do is I'll go here to the right view. I'll make that my current layer. And then here I'll type in isolate. What this will do is it'll isolate that section that we just created on the roof layer. And now here on our right view, we can basically start drafting our roof, our roof pitch, right? So the other trick is going to be to zoom to the extent of what is visible. We'll do Z, A for all, and then E for extents. So zoom all extents. And now here under the right, I can start drafting the roof. So we want it to slope up from here to here, and we want a specific overhang. Now, the important thing to know is the spring point, if it's sloping up this way, we want the line to start here. And then from there, we can offset the thickness of the roof. So what I'll do is I'll start here at this corner. I'll go up six and over 12. And so this would create a six and 12 slope. And then now I can delete the reference. And this is going to be that line that goes all the way down. Now I'll take this and offset it by the, th the thickness of the structure of the roof. So I'll go offset and I'll do 5.5. .5. And then here, we need to create an extension of the wall. So I'm creating two lines here, and we can extend it out to basically to this line. So we'll go here to extend. Next, what we need to do is take this and offset it for the overhang. So we'll go offset 12 inches and then offset here, the overhang in the front. Now, when we did the intersect two sets, it actually gives us a line that is joined. So I need to explode it and then take this and offset by two feet. Now I could take this and go to extend and take these and extend them out. And do the same thing here. So now I can extend this line out. But for the most part, the reason why we created this was to see the roof slope that we were going to create and having the overhangs be accurate. So 12 here, 24 here. Now what I can do is go to fillet radius of zero. So that will join those edges. And technically now I can take this and just delete that because we don't need it and join this. And I'll go from right to the perspective view and type in show. And so now we've basically created the form. Now we need to go to top view and go from here to here. So the way to do that is we need to turn on project. Otherwise, it's going to shift the location of where it is located. So I'll go to project, move, and move it from here to here. And we can see here on this 
view that it's looking good. Now what I can do is take this and move it out the overhang, the side overhang. So we'll do six inches. And now we need to extrude it all the way out to here plus six inches. So one way of making sure that we have that correct is let's take this and let's get rid of the clipping plane. Now we'll take this and go to mirror relative to the midpoint and either loft these together or we can just take this and extrude curve and it will extrude it out to that location. So this is a shed roof that we'll be creating for this design. And now the remaining part is going to be to go to the wall layer and we'll go to extrude curve and we'll extrude or extrude surface. And we'll extrude this top surface up past the roof. Then we can take this and do Boolean difference and subtract the roof. Now, if we take a look, let's go back to, I'll create a new layer actually and call this clipping plane or CP and make this a red color and do the clipping plane again. So clipping plane, vertical, from the middle, across, and up. And we can take this clipping plane and also rotate it around to see how that's looking on the inside. And so depending on whether you want the ceiling to be open or you want it to have to not be open to have like a ceiling here we can do that so let's let's adjust that and just have that as an option just in case we want to use that so we'll go here to roof hide the roof and we'll also take this and we'll hide it so control h then i'll go here to a new layer call this CLG for ceiling and create a box from here to here and then we'll go up by 3.5 it could either be 3.5 5.5 but it also depends on the span and the size this is a fairly small structure so I'm using smaller dimensions for some of the roof structure so now we'll go to show we'll bring in back the roof and technically these would be subtracted from this but then what happens so if we subtract then we don't technically need all of those openings we just need the openings here and then have this area above be completely open Right, so if this is the case, then we wouldn't have all of this. We just have this as an one open thing, and then we can have the mechanical equipment above with exhaust and things like that. Or if I go back, you can have it just open like this and have some windows and some natural ventilation coming out of the back. I think that might be better so I'll leave it like this but we can also have that option so I'll take this boolean difference and actually subtract the outside form so this way if we do want it we can bring it or we can hide it just by hiding that layer okay. and so this also comes down to a lot of design right a lot of design decisions that you make that you might want to have different but for the most part these steps you'll be some of these steps you'll be taking for any design in general like extrusion um intersecting objects and extracting information now with this 
we have our base model. I'll hide the, the clipping plane. I'll hide the roof. And this is going to be a shower. So I'll actually go to foundation, create a box, and bring this up maybe three inches. So it kind of creates this little portion here. And next, what we'll be doing now is creating the interior portion, which is going to be the vanity. We're going to have the toilet. We're going to have the shower. And the reason why I designed it this way is because I want the toilet, which is the part that smells the wars, to be completely separate from these two, which are more of the sanitary portions where you shower and you wash your hands. Um, so that's the approach that I took with this design. And also, this is a module. And the reason why I put the door here is because then we can technically copy these over and over this way. And we have in the back all of our water, right? So if here's a shower, here's the sink, and here's a toilet, all of our utilities are going to be out through the back. And this would be a really cool and very um, clean way of kind of camping or having an outdoor bathroom um, to share. So what I'll do is I'll undo and we'll come back to this portion. And now I'll be bringing from another model that I have all of the things that you'll need for this bathroom. The reason why I do that is I don't want you spending the time going and trying to grab all of these things when you can download them and use the ones that I've kind of provided for this exercise. So check the links below for the model that you'll have as a reference that you can copy things in. And so that's what I'll be doing is bringing in the rest of the stuff. I'll copy it here to the side and then show you how we can kind of build upon what we have here. All right, so I brought them in here. I brought them in from another project. These I created myself. This one I downloaded from CG Trader and it was a free model. And so was this one. And I kind of worked around, I created that one and also those. So you shouldn't have any issues using these. Um, I want to save you some time from having to go search through those, but it is important for you to know that there are resources out there like CG Trader where you can go download 3D models and it's super useful. So one of the tricks I like to use for moving objects, like let's say a toilet or anything that has a weird shape, I like to click on it, go here to fixtures, and we'll call these fixtures. So I'll go here, change object to layer. All of these are fixtures. What I'll do is I'll select this, make fixtures layer my current layer, and I'll go here to bounding box. Now that I've created a bounding box around it, I'll select this, go to M to move, and I'll move it from the back middle to this back middle, which will basically center it. And now I can select the box and delete it. And what this will do is if we look at it in top view, it will place it perfectly here in the back. And now I can click on this green arrow and do minus two inches, which will move it back by two inches. So now we've basically created the toilet room. Um, now we can move on to working on the shower. Now the next one is going to be the shower. So what I'll do is something similar. I'll select these two and I kind of have them spaced together um, to a good kind of comfortable location. So I'll do bounding box select hold down shift and select it with the box move from the top so you always want to reference what's most important and what's most important for me is to know the location of the shower head so if i bring put the shower head at the ground and i bring it up by seven feet well that will locate it where i want it next we're going to bring this in. And this is very similar. We'll do this, bounding box, select this, and move it from the back center to the back middle. Now I can select here. 
up by 30. So if I move that up by 30, the bottom is at 30. This is about, I think, 4, so 34 should be fine. Um, and also, the sink could be larger and could have other features, but I kept it fairly straightforward where it has a mirror, it has a sink. And so now that kind of takes care of the fixtures, right? So let's bring back the roof, type in show. Let's go to CP for clipping plane and let's move this back again. And if we look at it also in Arctic mode, we can see that the details are there. Here is one of the things I want to I want to talk about, and I think that it is a critical thing to consider is if this is going to be a shower, it is okay that we create the walls going down to the foundation, but the best solution, in my opinion, would be to raise the foundation and have a small stem wall here where the walls sit there and it creates a gap so we can clean the floor and clean this place without it possibly going in between the sill and the foundation. So we'll do that as an option here on the side. We'll go to shaded mode. I'll take this. Move it over and tap Alt to make a copy. So go to Alt, click and drag, and you'll see a plus sign. Now what I'll do is I'll take the walls. I'll go to Isolate. Then go to Foundation and extrude the bottom walls up by Four inches but the other thing we can do is offset so we'll just go here to extrude surface up by four inches and then subtract the walls from the bottom part and then here the other critical portion is that we actually want This is more for construction, not so much for the design, is we want to leave at least two inches. We'll go to extrude surface, at least two inches here to be able to build out the wall. Because if you do the foundation all the way out to here, sometimes the door framing size is smaller or larger, and that will cause issues when trying to install. Uh, so what I'm doing is Boolean union, and extruding this down here. Match properties to the wall, and then Boolean union, and then merge all coplanar faces. And that's going to be the cleanest way to create that opening, and same thing we'll do here. So extrude surface, this surface in by two inches, and extrude surface this by two inches, Select the foundation, Boolean difference, BD, to subtract that portion. And then those, we select holding down shift and then match properties to the wall. And then Boolean union with the walls and then merge all coplanar faces. I went fairly quickly, but I wanted you to see all of the steps kind of in order. And this is, so when we have, when I type in show and I hide everything except for the foundation, we see, so I'm hiding everything here. We see that we have everything clean and they would pour this foundation. So we'll take this Boolean union and then merge all coplanar faces. So they would pour this all the way up. And then here there would be a small, small wall. And then here there's going to be the shower. So there would also be a small depression here going down. Also drains for the 
toilet, and then the drains for the sink. I'll type in show, and just showing you here, two different options. The other thing that is critical is let's add some of the detail to one of the doors so you can see how that is created. Then we'll also be creating a small window here so you can see how the detail is fairly similar to the door. So let's start by selecting this one. I'll type in isolate. And when uh, we create a door, there's going to be a few things to keep in mind. One is that we have a door frame. So that's the first thing that we'll do is type in shell. And that's the technique that I like to use is when you type in shell, it's going to ask you what faces you want to remove and it will create a shell of the original object. So I'll go here to one inch and I'll select this face, the bottom and this back one. And what will happen is it will create a frame because we removed all of those faces and kept one inch from the side. Now the next thing that we'll do is create the door. And for that, we can take this line back here and go to extrude curve. We can extrude this curve, but as you can see, it's moving to the side. We can change directions by clicking on direction and you can click and create a new direction. And as long as you have ortho on, it'll snap you kind of to the X and Y direction here. We'll go to that side. Then I'll take this and go to extrude surface and extrude it in by two inches. Then what I like to do is depending on where I want it to swing. So if I want it to swing open from hinging on this side, then I can go to rotate take the side that it hinges on, create that reference here, and then rotate it around this way. Then I can take this and do match properties to the door, uh, door frame. And that basically creates the door frame and the door. That's more of like a very basic um, rough model of it. But that's how I kind of create my doors and later on this is only kind of like the walls that are wood we technically don't have any materials on the outside we don't have any materials on the inside and therefore we don't have any trim for the doors so this is just showing you one of the steps that I take for creating the basic doors and later on we can come in and add detail to the doors uh, depending on what style we want this to look like so now what we'll do is we'll hide the roof, go to control H. And what I'll do is I'll take this back side and I will create a window there. So I'll go here to the, my window door layer, make that current, then duplicate face border. So I'll duplicate that. And then I'll offset that by four inches to the inside. Now I can take this line, this curve or this rectangle and I'll do extrude curve to the outside. I'll take this and do Boolean difference, that inside portion or that solid. Now what I'll do is I'll create a solid again by extruding this bottom surface up. And since I have project on, that's one of the things that I would be careful with is when you have it on, sometimes it I keep it on and it projects things down. So now with this one, I'll type in isolate. And now we can go ahead and continue creating the window. The window, it's a little bit, it's similar to the door, but we don't do shell for the bottom. We just do the front and the back. Now we can do that again. We'll do extrude surface up by one inch. So this is going to be a, let's see, a vertical slider. So move vertical. But this divides it in half. And technically you want from the middle, so move vertical from the middle to this midpoint. 
Now I'll be extruding, extrude surface, this one, down to the bottom. And this one will be scaling it. So we'll do scale in one dimension. From the middle to the outside, we'll do one inch. And then we'll do shell again to remove. And so this is the outer frame. This is kind of what holds the glass inside. And now we can create the glass plane. So let's go here to extrude, curve. We'll extrude this curve up. And now under window and door, I'll create a sub layer called the glass and change the object layer to that. And of course, sometimes it's best to give it a different color. What happens is this plane is all the way to the back. So we want to go minus 0.5 and then do extrude surface with our glass layer. And we'll do 0.25 inches just so it has a little bit of thickness. And we'll take these two and do copy vertical and we'll copy this vertically to this one. So we've created kind of like this double hung window. Um, it has this middle frame, but we can also stagger them so they can bypass each other here. And now select these two, control G to group, and then type in show here. And so now we have basically created this window up here and this door. Now, if that's not the style that you want, we can also change that around. So I'll go here to isolate and I'll actually take this copy it from here to the other one. Take this Boolean difference, the window, and let's get rid of all of the other stuff. Now I'll take this, type in isolate, so I'm not looking at anything else. Select this, control shift G to ungroup it, then delete that middle part, delete this, and then hold down shift and control. In this way, if I select from left to right, I can select just these portions of the model and I can do move vertical, move this down here. We can also recreate it. So extrude shell and then extrude this again as a single object. And I can do control G to group and show here. So those are two options. I went through this one fairly quickly, but since we already had created most of this model, it was really easy to do that. And also created the door for that entrance portion. We can also add a window and that would also help add more lighting to the inside. So hopefully that was useful. Uh, an additional part that I didn't add to the original, but I definitely wanted to incorporate to this tutorial. So clipping plane, vertical, these are two different ways of achieving the same design with different features, right? Keeping in mind, let's say if we're trying to clean it or if this is trying to be like an out outdoor structure, um, that's the approach that I would take. So please let me know if you have any questions. I'll have the model available and a few other things in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe for future content. I do want to follow up and do other designs. These are more straightforward to get you started. If you've never used Rhino um, for kind of drafting and creating your designs. So thank you very much for being here. And um, I hope to see you next time.